no AI can take this and probably this is the only area AI will not be able to touch. But marketing or business development strategies are slightly gone in the back end because it's not directly to the consumer. Okay, so you know what you're asking me, I charge a lot of money for it. Ah. No, seriously, I'm not joking. You ask for the key to doing ah. things. You've seen residential property when it's happening, Godrej, Shobha, all of these. But why don't you see ad for commercial real estate? The, the current situation is where the people are valued for intelligence, critical thinking and also strategy. Today, actually starting a shop, retail shop is a big business anywhere of you We have a fantastic training institutes. We have fantastic people like you. There is going to be phenomenal growth in this. So. I personally believe that civil engineer architects have got multiple opportunities away from the traditional what, what, what you would do. Honorable Prime Minister Modi comes on TV and says from tomorrow, there will be no fossil fuel cars. So selling a commercial space is definitely different than what you sell as a residential, as a shop front, as a mall or as various aspects. Top 100 corporate firms, Amazon, Google, and Word. If they become net zero, 80% of greenhouse gases will be over. So first of all, you need to understand yourself first. What do you enjoy doing? Making the structural drawing, making the drawing, or you know constructing the house, or you want to. So you need to understand this first. What is your core step? Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, podcast series that we are going to be restarting again uh, at Ascend and of course a very important person to start with uh, Mr. Shashidhar Sharma he has already introduced uh, himself of course he has not introduced to the fullest potential because there is so much more that he has done which is probably saving his time to explain with some more stories of his uh, which definitely we'll try to mine it out of him uh, all right to start with uh, Sir, you have had different journeys. You started from railway, you went into a, a typical core construction, I would say, uh, then furniture like Herman Miller, then you came into consulting, which is Kushman, then space metrics, then now uh, building something for workplace. Uh, if there is something you need to talk about change management, I think that is your career. I know you have, you have changed a lot of things in your career. Uh, when do you choose to change? Or what, ha or what makes you change? I don't think that was change. Whatever I have done, even till today, it is a learning process. Everybody grows, not change. We are not chameleons. We don't change our DNA. It is basically, I believe that from the time I started working from Indian Railway Construction as a site engineer, then moving on to various avatars and roles. It was all about, I had more and more desire, aspiration and knowledge. So based on those inputs, I was able to find places where those inputs will be used, yeah. which can be used. So it is not about change probably, it it's is about growth. the learning phase, phase and development Correct. at the end of it. Great. So now you have had a majority share of your last, I think, a decade or more uh, in the commercial real estate sector. How do you define it with your expertise or is there a definition, number one? And number two, how do you see it different from a typical residential real estate sector? Okay, so uh, it is not one decade. Hmm. Probably uh, my core civil engineering knowledge and core uh, education what I got I did it for five, six years, huh. starting from Indian Railway construction, where I was making bridges, precess concreting, well foundation, and all that, and then getting into utility engineers, made 252 flats. I still remember that it is one of the best times of my life as a site hmm. engineer. And then probably I moved into commercial real estate completely. Hmm. And I'm talking in terms of 1990, when I was doing Airport, Coimbatore Airport actually. Hmm. I was doing the interior designs for Coimbatore Airport as a contractor and then various avatars. So now uh, the question is that how, how differentiate it, yeah. between the residential and commercial, commercial estate? Yeah. You know, very simple, no residential where you sleep, where you go and where you live. Hmm. You know, the we have, uh, Bangalore has done this. We have uh, 
made the commercial oh, sorry residential development one of the best in bangalore these are the first people who created 15 20 years back the villas i was staying in one of them adarsh mamidos they created 20 25 years back villa development community wise villa development we have in delhi mehroli and other areas the villas were not community developed they are individual villas and farm houses right bangalore actually cracked it they cracked it with gated communities of villas gated communities of houses so that is what the residential sector is all about the moment we come to the commercial real estate or commercial development by name itself it looks like where you do transaction right you don't go to relax or go to enjoy the transaction is being done in terms of footfalls hmm. visitors buyers customers sellers they are all coming together in those places that is the typical commercial real estate correct we have in bangalore commercial street hmm. go and see that no that is a commercial but then it happened hmm. then something called global delivery model happened thanks to mr narayan murthy hmm. he developed that one of the best innovation field of uh, it hmm. and it changed complete it deliverables and that's how the bangalore become the leaders in giving the it we are now the it silicon valley in fact bangalore is the silicon valley of the world that's what i believe correct mr narayan murthy gave that and when that happened then it moved to a very different level of commercial real estate mm-hmm. and which is what we are talking in terms of it parks mm-hmm. you know huge development <clears throat> i was recently in london when they talk in terms of commercial real estate they talk in terms of 100000 square feet at the maximum mm-hmm. we start from 100000 as a normal minimum so that is a commercial real estate in terms of office expansion we have got this uh gccs that we got it and ites mm. and we are the back end of the whole it development across the world so that commercial real estate is definitely different than what we have in commercial street in bangalore mm. so this is also a totally a different thing so you have one side called the malls the retails mm. Mm. and uh, other areas like you know theaters recreational areas that is also commercial that's also commercial real estate correct but i think what you're talking about here and is what i think is the we should side. be talking about is the commercial real estate in terms of it parks correct in terms of the it and its developments hmm. and customers and the clients coming into that area correct correct and we have one of the largest you know real estate uh, commercial real estate in, in bangalore hmm. you not believe and i think most of the fitnery knows almost on 50 to 60 million square feet mm. new grade a buildings are done in india every year mm. out of that one third happens in bangalore right. you know it's really huge so whenever some people talk about so much of crowd traffic and all thanks to 20 25 million square feet we are adding every year mm. that is the real commercial state happening in india and that i'm talking about only the grade a part correct right. so that's commercial real estate so that is the difference what i see and the most focus uh, mainly about in terms of development residential has taken up now mm. it is huge 2.5 lakh units mm. i just sold last year mm. in bangalore it's a huge actually yeah, yeah. yeah so when you say that the growth is very fast uh, both real residential commercial but let's stick to commercial uh so when something is trending a lot of uh, or something is probably developing a lot in the last two decades bangalore has seen a i don't know 100x probably change uh what do you see are the trends in cre at this point uh either in terms of the tech park and the client demands or in terms of the way it's constructed or in terms of just the deliverable that's given to the uh, customers who come and work there so how do you see uh, what is the trend in terms of that so i think uh, commercial real estate and mainly the it parks and the great builders mm. you know like prestige we got egl and we got brigade mm. you know all these 
they have actually cracked the system. They know what is needs, what the multinational corporations want. They know that, mm -hmm. and they have also. Bangalore has been on the leading uh, front on this. In fact, Hyderabad is also quite close to this. They exactly know what the customer needs. Mm -hmm. There are certain uh, you know norms, which is the kind of open areas, the collaboration theaters, you know, uh, clubhouse kind of thing. They have this all. Or every, so every firm which wants to take up a space, which is, can be one million, there is certain norms which has to be followed. For example, the fire safety rule, the kind of power which is there in the IT parks, mm -hmm. the kind of parking, and all of this. So a lot of other things are there, but the builder per se has really worked out mm -hmm. what actually the IT needs. And they are almost doing everything in their hand to get that in. And most of these builders are quite good. They provide everything what you need. Correct. You know, the amenities or everything. You know, like uh, we have already sorted out the employees' physical well being, in mm -hmm. fact. Whatever employee needs is there. We have, you know, cafeterias which has got five course meal in the prepared by chefs. Mm. You know, one of them I we we were involved mm. in designing. I don't want to name them, but five course meal, a cricket studio, mm. and a, a TV studio. Mm. You know, and uh, you just think if anything, it is there. So these are the people leading. Why? Because they want to attract talent, mm. and these young generation are quite demanding. They need. Yeah. They know what they need, and they get it. So everything is required, has been provided, okay. apart from the government regulations and norms. Now the other thing which is happening and most of the builders are doing is green energy. Okay. Now it's coming up. The trend, the new trend is the green energy, wind power, solar power, all those things. Saving of the water, rainwater harvesting. These are the things happening and it will keep on happening. COVID made a kind of uh, change the way people looked at offices Correct. and there is a tectonic shift there before covid and after mm -hmm. covid there's a shift and now these challenges that are happening in terms of coming back to office why should mm -hmm. i go to office bangalore is notorious for the right. traffic issues all these things so there's a shift now the builders as well as the occupiers they're both working towards key how to get those people back. Okay. But most of the people are coming back to office. Yeah. The trend is sustainability, green, collaboration. How do I get what I need? Mm. And how do I manage? And the, the, after COVID, the trend is return to office. Mm. Now it is almost norm in IT. Correct. And ITES is to come to two to three days three in days office. Day office yeah. So that is the norm. Yeah. Many people recently, TCS and other people mm -hmm. have pushed people to come back to office, uh, which we have to wait and see. Correct. How, how it's you know reciprocated. How it's by. working and how many Correct. people leave the job. <laughs> no, I don't see. think now they are going to leave the IT industry. It's very volatile at this point. So, but anyway, coming back, sir. So, in terms of commercial real, uh, real estate, we saw like you spoke about few trends, which we'll go in detail probably later. Uh, I also want to know, uh, in terms of your expertise, which is at you know a business development as such, hmm. how does that work in CRE? Like, what are the opportunities in business development, and how does it work on a day-to-day -day basis? So, you said my core competency is a business development. Was. And I hate that. <laughs> ah, okay. Got it. Yeah. I'm a civil engineer. Got it. And uh, and a civil engineer, as a civil engineer, I work with various uh, firms. Hmm. And I, I, I'm not saying that I hate this as a term, hmm. as a tag, as a business developer person. Or it limits you probably. But what it does is it removes uh, everything what else have done. Correct. Correct. You know? So... After 25, 30 years of experience mm. as a civil engineer, business development is one part. So Correct. that particular thing which makes me equal to anybody who's selling. Mm. So that is where I differ. Correct. But uh, I personally believe the one thing which is not taught 
hmm. in management schools, in uh, you know, in your form ascend, ascend also, I am also. They don't teach people how to really talk about anything what they are doing. Hmm. So business development is not about a scripted format which you can just PDF to everybody. Business development is all about how do you connect. Hmm. You know, very interestingly, <coughs> Brene, Brene Brown, one of the topmost person in terms of neuroscientist hmm. and her talks are very famous. <coughs> she said that the current situation is where the people are valued for intelligence, hmm. critical thinking, and also uh, strategy. These are the things which works <coughs> now, knowledge for that matter. Hmm. What will happen after AI knows how to speak? Correct. AI know how to present whatever any one of you are selling. Hmm. It will know better. Correct. We are already getting calls from the AI bots and they talk to you. Hmm. You know, you can sales do, calls are done by AI. Sales yeah. calls are already done by AI. What is real way you can actually project your product in the front? And that is not business development. Hmm. That is building trust. So Brené Brown has said very beautifully, the next level of real thing, real selling, real business development will happen from the heart. You know? Hmm. And if you see 90s, 1900, not 90s, 1900, the whole business was done by command and control. Hmm. Presently, as I said, intelligence, knowledge and uh, critical thinking, strategy. Currently, we are doing the next level and you should mark my word on this. It will happen, as Prenez said, hmm. from heart. So basically, what I understand and what I personally feel is going to happen it is going to happen through connections, mm. through empathy, Correct. and through your social network. Mm. No algorithm can take this. They cannot take this. So the next level of mm. selling, if you want to call it, business development, if you want to call it, next level of mm. selling. Next level of making your organization as a sustainable business model is going to happen from your social connections, from your empathy with the person you're talking to, that you want to give him or her the best product, the best services, the best solution, and your network. That is where it's going. So no AI can take this. And probably this is the only area Correct. AI will not be able to touch. This is what is not is going to work for all of us and that will come from heart. That's a very good statement, you know, that the future is from, you know, a connection of a heart in terms of even a transactional uh, point of view. Uh, now, let if I have to uh, deep down on, let's say, the sector as such, is it different uh, business development in CRE compared to other sectors or uh, is it quite similar but small nuances here and there? How, how, how do you think it is? Selling and uh, you know projecting your hmm. what you do or what you uh, sell or what you promote hmm. has been for thousand years, five thousand years same. Correct. You know, even the child when needs a Milk, no, mm. he has to voice it mm. by cry or something. So everybody is selling. Correct. When we go for an interview, it is selling. Correct. Right. When we interview, you are selling our organization for that important, talented, mm. you know, employee. So selling is all, all over. 
Now, the difference in terms of the sector has got to do with demand and supply. Mm. You know? So, for example, you have certain cars, you mm. cannot get it tomorrow, mm. you have six months. So, basically, it's all about demand and supply. But ultimately, the selling happens. That's and that is why the, there's a wait listed. Mm. I remember in my time, you know, the Chetak scooter, the telephone, we used to have, you know, five years line, one year line. And recent times also certain cars, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't get it tomorrow. Okay. So that is the selling uh, happened from the corporate level, from individual level. People have created the brand, people have created a persona, hmm. people have created the craving to have that particular product hmm. through selling. So selling in broader terms is same, hmm. but selling in terms of commercial real estate is slightly different. And I'm, if I take you back 20, 25 years back, <coughs> not 25, 90s, so around 35 years back. Before 90s, the selling was with something called property dealers. How of you heard property yeah, dealers, yeah, yeah. right? Brokers, agents. Yeah, so dealer, property yeah. dealers. The local guy knew certain flats, certain uh, land, parcels, certain this thing, he had a connection with the owner. Mm. So, and he puts up a stall or a shop, property dealer. Narendra property dealer, I still Correct. remember from Mayur where is there. He had that personal connection. Correct. He connects two people together, one wants to buy, one wants to sell. And that's how the property dealers happen. Mm. So if you see, even today that is happening. Correct. And top people who are doing this selling, you know, they're the, the global avatar of property dealers. Mm. You know what, they, what we call them? Yeah. International property consultants. Correct, IPC. Yeah. IPCs. We have top of them here. And they came into picture because multinational corpor corporates Correct. brought them here because they were comfortable dealing with them. Mm. They had a previous relationship and that's how it happened. So selling a commercial space, mm is definitely different than what you sell as a residential, as a shop front, mm. as a mall, mm. or as various aspects. Specific knowledge is required. Specific insights are required for each of these verticals. Mm. That almost everybody has to learn from there. Right. So that is the basic difference. So in terms of, let's say, uh, a a person in business development or marketing, let's mm. say. Uh, have you seen or have you witnessed uh, some unique strategies that someone has started and it has just taken over, uh, you know, as uh, like an influencer, right? So because there is there are always advertisement examples where we have few brands that we all love just because of the advertisement that they do. But marketing or business development strategies are slightly gone in the back end because it's not directly to the consumer. So have you seen such examples where uh, some are like an example for others? Okay. You, you know the biggest builders, mm. prestige, prestige comes to me because I have friends, close friends there. Mm. <laughs> EGL, mm. you know, KP Rehej and all these people. Have you seen their ads anywhere? Mm. You've seen residential property when it's happening, Godrej, Shobha, all those days. But why don't you see ad for commercial real estate, which basically mm. we are talking about. Correct. Why? Because they don't need to target the public. It's, it's the yes, exactly. business to business deals. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, these large organizations, large IT parks, they will have, you know, like, let's say at maximum 100 offices mm. there. And that offices, that will not come through the ad. That will not come through the influencer at the Insta Reels. It will not come. Mm -hmm. Because these are the large deals, Correct. which happens at a very large uh, uh, level. Mm -hmm. And it's not a deal for six months or one year. 
it usually tends to be three year lock in period yeah, five year lock in period or 10 year lock in period so this is a very nuanced way of hmm. reaching out to the customers you need to understand hmm. who's your target market and then there are various other methods of doing it hmm. if i advertise on a tv i take a ad sharukh khan comes and says this is by egl property no it, it doesn't affect. it goes to crores of millions of people hmm. not the target also the property consultants as well as the people property ipcs also do this part hmm. transaction leasing a very very focused team of a very professional people who know how to do this mm. and you don't need to go to the market with this so so there is a very different way of doing it and each one of 50 billion square feet we are selling every year correct and that's where we are talking about mm. so it is not in the mass market so there is a very nuanced and a very focused approach to this mm. and that is why you don't see ads that is why you don't see influencers market mm -hmm. it is basically a b2b kind of selling and that needs a different platforms so many people have worked on it and they've curated mm -hmm. various platforms where you get these people together that is where you have uh, you know very interesting gathering of the builders the occupiers they come together one of them basically i run worked in conclave platform where the commercial real estate people come to talk about climate change global warming mm. and that is where the whole fraternity comes together and that is where this relationship building happens and that is the key to selling correct to them so that relationship that network has to happen you have to know who needs what mm. and you have to have what he or she or the corporate needs and these are the things happening a lot of people are doing a lot of good stuff mm. many platforms are there coordinate is one platform Correct. where a lot of people come together so these are the places where it happens but mostly even beyond all this thing these are if in my opinion 10% 50 15% of it mm. but mostly it happens one to one all the time correct there is no other way and ipcs have cracked it correct they know how to do this mm. they have a very senior professional involved in this correct and the focus are very good cbra jail kushman way queen night fan colliers they exactly know what is needed mm. and they exactly know who has it so that is connection will work and that is the only thing the way it is working so that's very nuanced way of selling correct uh, sir in terms of just change in the scenario of how uh, i'll take bangalore as an example uh, like you told normally <coughs> the conventional setup was okay a big business comes here and they ask for 500 uh, 1000 square feet 1 million square feet or so on uh, in the recent times however uh, bangalore is also starting from uh, it capital to a startup capital uh, and startups don't need that much amount of space they start with let's say 50000 square feet or 100000 square feet or even smaller sometimes uh, have you seen any change in their requirement compared to a big mnc kind of a requirement or is it like it's it's pretty same how do you see it okay very interesting bangalore has become a uh, startup capital that's what it's saying that's what government says <laughs> i'll not take the credit for that's that that's what nascom says <coughs> yeah. it is has always been startup cap uh, startup place correct ecosystem, ecosystem yeah. correct because of the skills hmm. and talent available here the okay. biggest startup started here correct infosys correct they changed the way so every ecosystem has to have talent pool hmm. this every uh, startup has to have a talent pool so of course we are uh, having 10000 startups in bangalore hmm. but then we are having far fortune 500 companies in bangalore mm. you go to a belandur road after ring road yeah. you see 500 of them lined up yeah, yeah, from yeah. here to the airport <laughs> so why they are here because of the startup correct because the talent they attract mm. because of talent and all these things are there so there is a personally speaking 
it is india's time now hmm. next 5 10 years is india times there is going to be phenomenal growth in this hmm. across india hmm. hyderabad bangalore mumbai pune ncr there there's so much work happening here now that uh, this dearth of talent now hmm. 30% of ai talent is in india but you need more and more and more and that is where the whole ecosystem has developed correct, correct. we have a fantastic training institutes we have fantastic people like you at sn lot of things are here hmm. so everything is geared up to fill this gap, gap yeah. and so this is where we are i think startup capital as well as it is it capital as well so both are and they you know is so what do you call it uh joint at the uh the thing at spine uh-huh. spine so i forgot the name but we are we have a very symbiotic relationship with mm-hmm. it and you know a startup capital so now we spoke i think uh, before the uh, session started you spoke to them you spoke about uh, some important term like change management also uh, and you told also uh, that uh, there are a lot of roles that they are not aware uh, similarly there are a lot of people in this industry especially in construction industry who are not aware of the roles especially in the cre uh so can you name a few like what are the roles what are the job opportunities uh, available in cre both for ipcs uh, developers or on the vendor side because you have seen all three <laughs> okay so as a civil engineer for all of you an architect uh, she is there the typical job of civil engineer i have been there done that you know go to site and start working 24 by 7 for that matter hmm. i have slept at site with a brick uh, you know under my head and 24 by 7 have worked as a construction because if the concrete is going on for the well foundation that goes on for 24 hours 36 hours continuously you can't stop it and seven of them together in the river bed so you have to be there sleep these are the typical things i also knew you know i wanted to join indian engineering services Mm. want to join railways i joined ircon indian railway construction mm. but then world has moved on the world has moved on to just in time jobs mm. gig economy but for civil engineer it is not only the job from the builder what you get it is also not the job you will get from the architectural you will not get uh, from the consultants mep consultants you know structural consultants hmm. these all jobs are there and as one of them is from bbmp these all jobs are there but what has changed at my time my father used to tell me either civil engineer doctor ias ias correct four jobs are there otherwise to tum na dukan pe baithoge hmm. so that kind of thing was there correct today actually starting a shop retail shop is a big business any one of you can do correct you know that's where the economy has gone to right so i personally believe that civil engineer architects have got multiple opportunities away from the traditional what work, what you were doing you know apart from working for venkatraman associate thomas and associate with biggest architects here in bangalore you can join ipcs it is one of the best job available right now for the Uh, civil engineers yeah. architects you know they are the people who can do who are doing uh, amazing level of work with kushman wakefield night fire cbi rj lalitas so these are the people who are at the cutting edge of yeah. this relationship okay. building but then you have also in the large corporates amazing opportunities are there for uh, commercial real estate heads under them the project managers facility managers mm. you know fnb you know currently is a huge area which is can be filled by architects and designers in terms of delivering mm. uh, corporate projects so that is called cre facility management and administration mm. this was typically filled by one third was filled by 
hospitality sector mm-hmm. one third is filled by and it's my my you know top of the mind numbers it's, mm-hmm. i'm not i have not done the research on this so one third is filled by the defense professionals mm-hmm. the army people and other uh, air force and all these people who have joined this vertical <clears throat> and one third is of course from the architects and mm-hmm. you know construction civil engineer in that there is another vertical happening which is really wonderfully well and i think all of you should think of in terms of sustainability net zero mm-hmm. next 10 years every corporate will have a sustainability vector or uh, you know sustainability you know uh, area a theme mm-hmm. a team will be there sustainability that is where the architects and civil engineers are much better suited to get that job and each corporate officer will have that so that is another one which is will help then there is a you know a lot of technology is developing in delivering the real estate hmm. you know so home line is one a lot of people are aggregating so that's the technology part if you are technology kali attitude hmm. so you should think in terms of those lines where they are developing so the logistics hmm. technologies are developing for that you know booking your seats and you know it the whole mm-hmm. corporate office that's another area which is working mbp and all the monitoring system firstly my chillers it servers all these things requires uh, inputs from uh, designers architects so it of course is slightly away but the hvac is the area where you can work and all this will well ultimately get aggregated to a basic design level where everything will sitting on that platform correct so a lot of so mis has happened mm-hmm. building management system has happened a lot of work and it's growing but my my key you uh, know thing to you start learning sustainability mm-hmm. start working on that that is going to grow exponentially in next 5 to 10 years true so any civil engineer architect learn sustainability go into deeper into that how you can make the your office net zero reduce the carbon footprint that's another area is working how do you make your offices sustainable Correct. carbon footprint Correct. reduce the carbon footprint Correct. recycle reuse and it's good that a lot of uh, developers and builders throughout especially the bangalore ones uh, have already announced that you know they will be net zero by 20 35 40 some of them are started to work on it some of them yet to i guess with the help of some esg consultants here and there uh, also sir uh, when you said sustainability is one which is coming up front uh, is it because Uh, there is some kind of a pressure from uh, the political standpoint because some countries have signed the uh, paris agreement you know treaty and all those things is it do you think because of that or is it by inbuilt ideology of the generation where they think no we need a sustainable place to work uh, what do you think it is or it's a mixture okay very interesting in this because this is like you know this passion for life for me so but i'll tell you one very interesting thing you said that uh, a lot of people builders are saying that they are going to be net zero uh-huh. that is business development correct you know that is where the business development comes in correct picture. correct you know a government and you are saying the government has done it uh-huh. government in the government itself uh-huh. has said 2070 correct so why the builder is saying 2030 uh-huh. business development uh-huh. that is what you say and lot of people are doing a very good work and i know for sure you know purvankara you know a lot of ramsons a prestige uh, you know i have seen because first hand experience they're doing a lot of work there but this is the need of the r and i'll tell you why because i work on this very very deeply into this 39 to 40 percent of greenhouse gases mm-hmm. comes from the commercial real estate infrastructure development, and that is the area we can do something. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And my network in the area where I worked for last 25, 30 years is this network. Right. So when uh, I got, you know, inspired by certain people, my peers and industry leaders, I picked up this particular sector, commercial sector, because that is where I can make a difference. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm doing things. Otherwise, there are many other places where we can work. And that is how the Green Footprint Trust was born, mm. which I'm founding member. And as you ask me, is it government doing it or not? Government has limitations to do this. Correct. If tomorrow Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Modi comes on TV and says from tomorrow, there'll be no fossil fuel cars on the road, it will get sorted out. Hmm. But this is also will sort out the poor people who yeah. are lively, who would depend on the fossil fuel. Yeah. So he's not going to say it. And that's how very intelligently he has talked about 2070 because hmm. probably he's focused on that. Hmm. Many people have said many things, 2030, 2040. But I am quite happy about it. But then legislative power is one which can make a lot of difference. We have already done that difference. Mm -hmm. And I have seen, all of us have seen, that how the uh, ozone hole was repaired Mm -hmm. by one Kyoto Protocol, where the 100% of the uh, United Nations came together Mm -hmm. and banned CFC to be manufactured on the planet Earth. Now that's being healed. That has come from awareness part of it. So the awareness is required. After doing the Bangalore work green conclave, the first one mm. last year in February, then to Mumbai work green mm. conclave, then Hyderabad, and the next one I'm doing in Pune, Pune on 22nd November. What I've seen and which gives me a lot of confidence that the young generation knows mm. They are also driving it. Mm. I've seen the certain real estate people have no clue mm. what is the climate change, how it's going to hit the whole, the way we work at offices. They have no okay. clue. But 99% of the young generation I have met mm. in those conclaves, they are aware and that is why they were there in that conclave okay. to understand. And I'm 100% sure this can be solved by awareness, Hmm. you know, awareness, if the awareness comes and if we change the way we live, the way we use, the way we are consumers, if we can Hmm. change, then we can solve this. And Hmm. it is not far off. The issues are not far off. We are already crossed the global warming of 1.5 degrees. They've already crossed and we are seeing the results mm. happening in multiple ways, you know, multiple ways is happening. But the young generation, mm. if they decide to use something, if they decide to do something, 10 billion people, if they can think like this, mm. we can solve this problem. So the awareness and that's where I think we should be talking, start by talking to each other, you know, Mm. you know, technology we have already sorted out. We have the technology which can capture the CO2 from the air. Correct. We have all the technology. So the awareness, the young generation is very much aware. And that is the reason we keep on seeing Mm. lot of focus by this corporates on the ESG and they keep talking about it. Of course, the ESG was driven by certain people in the US. Correct specifically the people who manage the assets Mm. and the people who wants to focus on this and they have done this. But what I've seen across the corporate real estate that the awareness had come in and and that has come in because of the young generation. Very happy to see that. Good to know, sir. (laughs) Sir, so you spoke about awareness and talking to people. And that is something that I commend you in terms of how you have built 
you know uh, network your own network okay. uh, how you have had relations uh, relations throughout the industry uh, professionals for you and i would want your perspective to the uh, audience as well how important do you feel network is in professional career or uh, i'm not going to say how important it's probably very high in the list uh, apart from that i also want to know how do you build it because i think that's the more important question for them that uh, civil engineers unfortunately are very succumb to their own projects and their own colleagues so how do you go out and build a network that ends up being a lifelong with relation okay so you know what you are asking me i charge a lot of money for that ah. no seriously i'm not joking ah. <laughs> you ask for the key to do ah. things and uh, typically you know my first job was uh, working for indian railway construction as a civil engineer and i was placed at uh, around 50 kilometers away from raksol border of india hmm. 50 kilometers away in pathlaiya jungle pathlaiya is a place and that is a forest hmm. i have placed there as making two bridges you know with a well foundation pieces concrete so typically all the civil engineers are placed in god for second places where they don't even have buses to go there yeah, right. you know so cycle scooter or whatever hmm. so you don't know anybody correct so don't blame them if uh-huh. they are not outspoken you know because they don't find anybody to speak uh-huh. at the most they find the laborers how much you can talk to laborers correct and to the other you know vendors uh-huh. yeah of course you can talk to vendors now they are smart turn the now most of very us professional they. yeah <laughs> now most of us so it's typically the civil engineer the architects uh, not architects architects of course start working with the architecture form and all but the civil engineer typically they have got a very Uh, you know bad deal mm. they go where development is happening mm. there is no society nothing is there so if you are building a houses 1000 uh, you know pristine city 15000 houses mm. nobody is there so you don't know how to do this you know your job you have certain labor camp and then you get them to the site and start working so basically you don't socialize and that's the reason of the whole holy diwali dashera everybody is out of the place because they want to find some people to uh, meet correct but then you can crack it as you know brenny brown says the next 10 years next level of development is going to happen from heart most of the jobs will take it care by you know ai the low level jobs we take it care by the ai they will know how to uh, do the rebarring they will know how to make a you know or schedule hmm. pbmc so all these typical work of the civil engineers they will know they will do a better job actually yeah. what is already being done by them quite well yeah so it is going to happen from heart and how do you sell yourself for that you need to connect you know you need to have this connection and i said as i said the next level is happening from connection hmm. empathy right connection and empathy is very important and that's all so how do you build connections hmm. now there is only a few ways to develop this connection why you are here to listen to me why because you think i have certain knowledge you think i have something which you want to take away so that knowledge has not come because i studied civil engineering in 1987 that has not come from there that knowledge has come in my experience then you say okay so that means i have to wait for 25 years to you know do this no everywhere and wherever you are you need to find something that you can give it to the next person the first person so you go to a retail showroom right why do you buy that fridge that particular tv because the person standing there has the knowledge he will explain more than what you get on amazon mm. and he will connect with you right he will enthuse confidence ki boss yahi sabse badhiya hai yahan pe this is the best and then he will list out things knowledge that particular area the knowledge 
and I remember the story from Japan. Even the sweeper there, yeah. if he's sweeping, you watch. These people are different level. Yeah. Even if he's sweeping, he's doing a, such a thorough job with focus and attention. So what you need to do, wherever you are, you need to excel there. The moment you excel, you, in your circle of influence, they will start valuing you. And that is how you build connection. And that is how you sell. So slowly and slowly, this circle of influence grow bigger and bigger. And that is where you have to come. Nobody is going to ask you tomorrow and sell 1 million square feet of commercial real estate. No, it starts small. But what you need to do is to keep on learning, develop something which the other person in front of you, where you can help him. That is how you develop connection. That is how you build your network. Because in the commercial real estate, even though it's a very big word, transactions. Mm. In the commercial real estate, transactional things does not work. If you are there with the person when he needs a job or if he needs a space, if you are there with that person when he needs it, then there are 40 different people are there to fight with you. We call it red ocean. Yeah. You have to develop the green ocean, the blue ocean, sorry, blue ocean. And that is where you have to work. If the RFP, and I keep telling it to my team also, if the RFP is out for some space, you are already lost it. Before the RFP comes and if you have that relationship, they would have called you. Then you will get, get it. Yeah. If you, so I keep saying this and it's, it's quite, a, you know, kind of a guru mantra. You take it from me yeah. here. If your professional friends and peers, they know you, then they also know what you do, right? Yeah. Now, if they know what you do, and if they have that requirement of what you do, then they should call you, not the other way around. You know, and that is where you have to develop that relationship. You know, because if you are my friend, professional, even professionally, and you need something, I should be in your mind. And that will happen only last six months or one year of my relationship with you, mm -hmm. then only will, I will be on mine. And I should have helped you somewhere Correct. with my knowledge, for example, with my support to you in your job. And that is how you develop connection. That is how you develop your credibility. That is how you will be able to help because he will know for this issue, I will call Shashi. Mm. And he, if he does that, then you have that relationship. And you don't have to Ask for job. I don't, I don't ask for job because I have been there supporting, developing, sharing knowledge. Then the, my friend, professional friend for that matter, will know what I do. Then why should I call him? Is there a job? Because if he has the job, he'll call me. So that is the way you develop. So excel in whatever you're doing. Become a source of knowledge. Solve some of those people's problems. And you establish yourself a thought leader in whatever small way. And then you will develop a very strong relationship. Mm. And interestingly, this network is not localized Correct. to a particular form. Mm. If you develop this, you will take this to anywhere, wherever you go, right? And that is why you see the fraternity is very small. Mm -hmm. In our fraternity, one person moves from here and he goes to the to other place and he's not hired because he's the architect. He's not hired because he's a civil engineer. He's hired because of his credibility in the market, mm -hmm. his network in the market. And that is what I'm saying. The next level will work on only this. 
connection, empathy, and social Sorry. network. That's all is good. Good one, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One lakh rupees. <laughs> <laughs> Would you take equity? No. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but uh, thanks a lot for that. So, sir, you started this by saying that uh, you know the exposure or awareness for civil engineers uh, is not available. You shared your story with the Nepal border. Uh, so my next uh, turn is, so if awareness is shown, if exposure is given, uh, a lot of times people do hesitate from grabbing it. Uh, a lot of time people, uh, some people take it right away. Uh, they ask questions, they try to uh, get a personal connection out of it. Mm. But some people are slightly hesitant if they're, let's say, an entry level engineer. And they would be hesitant towards talking to a, you know, a country head like you or so. Uh, what do you have to tell to those uh, in terms of, is it a confidence issue or is it something that they feel like, okay, what if I ask something and this is silly enough for that person? Uh, or how do you think you should solve that? Uh, if you have any uh, perspective on that. Oh, it's been a long time since you were in that position. <laughs> Uh, but no, no, I have still. been, I have been there, and you know, like interestingly, I met uh, Bill Gates recently, mm. and a very smart person. He's written one of the best books, and uh, on the climate change, global warming, and I got introduced to him in a different way. That uh, my passion is mm. climate change, global warming, and uh, you know, he's such a wonderful person. The good thing about him and most of the successful people, they're curious. Mm. So when I get introduced to him as a climate change global warming person, it's very on the fly kind of a meet. It was not regular. Or okay. I just happened to be there and then I just got into And then we had this discussion. He asked me a question. Mm. Uh, okay, so Mr. Sharma, what do you think I should do to make a difference in climate change. Yeah. That level, the guy is asking a question, curious, very curious. And this is the attribute of successful people, yeah. curiosity. You know, there's no harm in asking questions. You know, if you find some person, you, there's no harm in asking because it's not showing your ignorance, it's showing your curiosity. Yeah. Yes, of course, you don't have to ask you what is the a for F, apple or B for boy. You have to ask certain question which you are curious about it, but that requires mehnat, a mm. <laughs> little bit of homework. So whenever you are going to meet somebody like this, you know, you knew that I'm going to be here. Do mm. a research, like research before. Who is this guy? Why is coming? What is going to do? You are going to watch a movie. Do a research. You are going to see a recital. You know. Just to certain, a little, I, thanks to Google Baba, you know, you can do whatever kind of research about anybody. So do that research, ask question. Because the moment you ask question, it establishes one thing. What is that? It is your personal connection to that person. He will remember the question. I will remember the question if you ask me. And if it is very interesting, what happens? You just made a very strong relationship with the guy. If it's an intelligent question, you just make a fantastic relationship with the guy. Because most of people, you know, like me, who are old enough, as Jack Ma said, after 40, 50 years, you just need to share knowledge. You don't do anything else. So most of us, like us, we want to share knowledge. Whatever we have experienced, whatever insight we have. But nobody is asking that question. So ask the question. It is the best way of making connection. Absolutely amazing way of making connection. Not this kind of question. Hmm. This is, you know, a professional thing is doing. Curiosity. Curiosity will trigger enthusiasm. Will trigger a strong relationship. Ask some interesting question. Don't ask uh, vague questions. Be clear about this. And you don't have to do a research or PhD to ask questions. Just Google it before meeting anybody. Questions is a very important thing to do. Correct. Does that answer your question? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. definitely. Uh, sir, as uh, we, uh, you know, before we end the session, uh, if someone is interested to get into a role in business development, are there a couple of things that are a must in terms of skill set? And if yes, what are those? So I will not say business level. Again, you know, I'm, I'm very clear about this. Of course, there's a s curriculum and that business level yeah, thing yeah, is there. Sure. It's there, you know, business level is name, which basically says people what they do. Mm -hmm. I usually say that solutioning mainly Correct. is basically we are providing solutions to your problem. You have a need, we provide the solution. That is the way you should look at it. First thing is, uh, do some research and talk about something which you are confident. You should be confident of the product. You should be confident of the solution yourself first. Because this whitewashing, greenwashing will not go for a long run. You have to make a relationship for a long run. Because the kind of amount of effort you're going to do with the person that should not close in the first deal itself because that product was horrible. He will not even talk to you. So join places where you feel comfortable of being confident because without confidence you cannot sell. And you can sell but then you will not sell again. Repeat customers are very, very important because it reduces your 80% of effort in the second cell. Mm -hmm. So know the product, know the firm, know the services, know the consultancy thoroughly and see this is what I'm going to do. Leave one job or two. Mm -hmm. India is now not in the situation where you will not find jobs. Mm -hmm. India is in a very different level. So you, there's no dearth of opportunities for India and Indian team and the young generation. So fine, do research before joining. That is the first thing. Second thing, you should invest time and effort to learn how to speak. Very important. And I cannot say you know, it is probably the best thing you can learn for any role what you want. That's why you see in the top corporations, the top CEOs and CEO, CEOs and business heads, operations heads, project heads, see the way they speak. So invest time and effort to learn how to speak. Toastmaster is one of those places where you can actually join. I was a president of Palmido's Toastmasters Club. And I'm even today I'm learning. You know, I'm, I don't stop. So learn how to speak. And the third very important, which nobody bothers, learn how to give presentations within the organization to the clients, Making PPT is not the end of the story. Giving that presentation is the key to getting a project. Mm -hmm. Learn how to do. In Kushman Wakefield, I have actually did this training for Bangalore and Mumbai. Presentation skills training. Mm -hmm. Presentation skill 101. You need to learn this. Very important. Mm -hmm. And the final thing become expert in what you are selling in that area. And it takes a little bit of effort, of course, Correct. and uh, investment in terms of knowledge or in terms of course or whatever you do. If you are not expert, if you don't know the subject by heart, if you don't know your product by heart, if you don't know your solution by heart, you will be only talking. It will not come from your heart. And that thing, people, especially the clients, and there's a procurement guy there, mm. especially the procurement guy knows mm. he, he's bullshitting. So learn the product by heart. 
because that is the only way you can infuse confidence in the person. So these are three very, very important skills. Of course, it's given that the core subject where you're working, you should be doing. Mm -hmm. That goes beyond saying. But these three very important things. Join a speaking course. Very important. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So, uh, when, when we speak about the three top three things, let's say, uh, in terms of what you need to have to get into any, any kind of management role, I would say. Uh, I'll not repeat business development again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See the way I spoke to you. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, so in that case, uh, before getting into uh, any, uh, I think some of you might have questions. So before getting into any questions from the audience, if someone has to join, let's say, uh, let's say something into your passion, which is uh, the sustainability part or uh, change or carbon uh, neutral, any of those kind of concepts, uh, how do you start? First, very simple, go to Coursera and there's a lot of courses there. Start from there. It's very cost effective, you know, do something like that. You know, when I started talking about this uh, climate change, global warming, and I knew that uh, I need to learn, so I did specialization in ESG, spent one and a half years of learning mm. into, after 2022. Mm. Because before I get into this, I wanted to learn. Mm. I did the climate change certification course. Mm. I did well-being. Mm. You know, all that I did. So for you, it is easier. Go online courses. There are a lot of courses. Just Google it mm. and you'll get to know. Right. Do those courses, small, small courses. Start building up. And one more th very important thing I must tell you, forgot to tell about the business. Start working on your LinkedIn profile. Start working there. Forget Facebook, Instagram, you know, other places. Every hiring manager looks at your LinkedIn profile. Share one post, knowledgeable post, learn it from somewhere. Put it there at least once in a month or once in a week. Develop your LinkedIn profile. Very important for you to become a knowledge provider. So do that. That's very important. So learn. There's a LinkedIn. There are a lot of courses are there on the climate change. And not only climate change, business development, sales. You know, this LinkedIn university is there. Go there. Start learning. And there's no stopping. Don't stop learning. Doctors used to do that before. Now, each one of us has to do this. And I have been doing, I keep learning. I keep, you know, joining courses. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't need to be on Toastmasters, but I went there. I am still working in, as one of the consultants there, helping the community of Palm Meadows. I was president and all that. Learn. They teach you. I learned the real way of speaking from there, mm -hmm. you know. You remove your crutch word, words. I, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So you start learning from there. So learn deeply. 30 seconds, 15 seconds Instagram reels are not learning. No, it is not. Invest. Read the blog post. Mm -hmm. Join the, the podcast. So one hour, two hour podcasts, they go deep into the subject. And I have cracked it. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I tell you, you know, very cheat sheet for this. I listen to podcasts at 1.5 speed hmm. to 2.0 speed, double the speed. It reduces the time completely. And I get to know what is there. Go to that. 1.5 X and uh, two hours is... You know, one hour, one hour, 20 minutes. Learn. Learning is the only way to survive now. It will keep changing you. You know, the AI is going to hit you guys all. It's already done 40% of jobs in the US at the lower level. Journalists, gone. Correct. You know, sales, call centers. You know, I get calls now which I'm not able to understand whether it is a human yeah. or AI. I don't know. It is already happening. Correct. So learn. Sir, so before uh, we end, we'll be opening it up to you guys if you have any questions.
uh, to serve. Providing solutions to business. Now, as uh, my fellow colleagues, we work in site and we work in different stages of construction business. So what is the importance, for instance, now if I get a role in business development or giving solutions to a business, uh, is, it, is it really helpful to do this so that it will uh, like uh, give 5x to my career? Does it give immense value? Is, should everybody take this uh, business development as part of their career or uh, should you not is my question. Okay, so uh, I was uh, giving a, a lecture in uh, one of the institute, civil institutes here and they called me for their convocation. Hmm. I know. Sorry? Atria. Ah, correct. Atria. And I was there. So first thing you must understand, all of you, you're mainly architects and civil engineers. Your career path is much more stronger than the IT career path. The IT guy, 25,000 is starting salary, 30,000, 50,000 is starting IT people, right? And yours will be 10,000, 15,000 site engineer and all that. So all this in which is IT people are doing and you start feeling uncomfortable. Are yaar, wo to ash kar raha hai. And I'm bloody God, God for second place where you know nothing is there, no pub, no bar. My boss does not take me for you know that evening uh, get together. But the IT guys, they will keep on learning. And the threshold to join the IT industry is six months course, and you've done four years course. So that is the threshold. So as they keep on growing in their business, in their career path, it, they keep on getting more and more money. But the threshold is only six months. Any language, any course, I think two years, let's say two years, whatever. But you as an architect and a civil engineer, you are adding value in each month to your knowledge. It keeps on growing. And your job is not ending after 15 years because IT is a pyramid. You know, 1,000 people initially, that becomes next level 100 people, next level 10 people, next level one person. There's no growth, right? But as a civil engineer, as an architect, you are adding value by learning on-site experience. That keeps on growing. And after 15 years, all of you will have much more job opportunities than IT people. That's why you see 30, 40, 50, 30 to 40, 50, 45. Why all the IT guys are starting a startup? Because they hit a glass ceiling. They cannot go beyond a certain level. Because there can be only one boss, no? In civil engineering, there's multiple. We are talking about what? Six million people of IT and ITS. Construction businesses is the oldest business, by the way. The longest, uh, second largest. What is the first one? You know that? What is it? Agriculture. No. Agriculture is not, I'm not talking about that. Agriculture, of course, is there. The first, beyond civil construction, civil engineer is health worker. That is the top one. So civil engineer. So you keep on going. So, but now your your question was about the business development. You will also not grow if you don't know how to, say to share knowledge. You don't know how to project knowledge, how to project confidence. Every one of us has to be salesman. I I do hate the word business development, but everyone is a salesman. And for you to excel from the next of your competitor in the next organization, you know you should know how to sell yourself and your knowledge. So everyone. But then what happens, anywhere you go beyond a certain level, you are not doing Mitti Gara, Cement, Sand Cement, RCC. You are developing business. At after a certain level, when you are GM projects, 
So you're not going as a site engineer. You're GM projects. So what you're doing, you're creating value for your organization. So you're creating brand for your organization. That is selling. So selling, of course, from any level, you have to have this technique. You have to learn this. But first focus on the knowledge. Without knowledge, you can't help anybody. Solutioning. Let's talk in terms of solutioning. It's not selling. Solutioning. Most of us... See, this has become a complex world. Earlier, you put a flyer in the newspaper. It goes to a house and it takes the flyer calls. Not call, go to the next door. So that was... The, now the selling of a house has become complex because there are so many things, so many platforms. You know, your selling is what? What is the rating? First, you go and check the rating, then you do. So how do you do that? In that, how you project in this red ocean of knowledge, how to become different, how to become blue ocean is the way is called selling. And that is what business... So you have to learn business development and selling, whether you want it or not, to grow in your career, whichever it is, you should know how to 